I'm here at the Western Australian Museum in Perth with exhibition co-curator Paul Bridges of the exhibition Dead of Honour. Paul, we've heard a little bit about what's in the exhibition. Can you tell us about what significance the campaign was and the conditions that the commandos faced when they arrived in East Timor? Okay, the, uh, the number two independent company were, were the first were the only unit to survive after the massive Japanese onslaught of uh, early 41 and into 42. Uh, they were actually cut off from Australia, um, by, well, communications wise, and so they had to cobble together a radio. Uh, in the meantime, they took the initiative and uh, took on the Japanese, and that garnered the support of the East Timorese, because in the short period that they'd been there before the Japanese arrived, uh, they were able to establish a rapport with the local population and when the Japanese came they behaved in an appalling manner and so the Timorese were very quick to, to side with the Australians against a, a quite a barbaric aggressor. Can you tell us how many men were in the second second independent company? Mm. Okay, an independent company is uh, larger than a normal company uh, double the size in fact. So you're looking at about 270 men, 81% uh, 80 of those were drawn from uh, recruits in Western Australia. Wow, 81%, that seems like a lot. W did they have special training and skills provided before they landed in East Timor? Oh certainly, they were trained at Wilson's Promontory in Victoria and they were the second unit to be trained and uh, British commando trainers were brought to Australia to train them. Could you just give us some idea of the conditions that these men faced when they arrived? Certainly. Well, they first arrived in West Timor uh, and then moved to and invaded the neutral Portuguese colony of, of East Timor. Uh, that was on the 17th of December and uh, the conditions there were quite appalling. In fact, uh, 90 to 95 per cent of the men soon contracted malaria and uh, were very quickly suffering the effects of that. And so the regimental medical officer ordered that the unit uh, be deployed into the hills away from the mosquitoes. And can you tell us a little bit about the relationship between the commandos and what we, we know as criados? Certainly. The criados were uh, basically uh, East Timorese uh, boys. Um, mostly their, their age was between 9 and say 15. Um, there were some older ones of course. Uh, but certainly they came from the villages and when the Japanese came and attacked villages, they then wanted to side with the Australians and assist the Australians to, to rid the country of the Japanese. Paul, could you just tell me what kind of service the Criados offered to the commandos? The Criados were the eyes and ears of the soldiers. When they went out on patrol, they would go ahead of the, 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 the small subsection uh, advance and they would go into the village, they would sound out whether the Japanese had been there or not or how soon, how soon ago they'd been through. Uh, and if it was safe, they'd then bring the, the, the soldiers in, uh, they'd be fed and housed, uh, and then they'd move on. Uh, they also did uh, all sorts of things for them like uh, translate, uh, did their washing, gathered food for them, um, carried their packs. Um, basically they were their companions throughout the campaign and certainly the soldiers would not have survived without them. Against all odds, a lot of the commandos actually survived and did come home. What was the fatality numbers, can you tell us? Certainly. Uh, throughout the war, uh, the second independent company, uh, well, who became commandos, they, uh, lost 51 killed. And so the, the blokes themselves refer to themselves as the, the lucky company because despite the fact that they were, of all the Australian units, uh, were in the most contact with the enemy throughout the war, uh, they only lost small numbers. And Paul Bridges, just finally, if you could tell us and share with us what your highlight of the exhibition is? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I, think, I think one of the highlights for me is the, uh, the Keith Hayes jacket. Um, Keith was one of the, the, the unfortunate soldiers in the unit or in the section that went into Dili the day, uh, or the day, the morning of the invasion. And uh, he and the rest of his section, or most of the rest of the section, were uh, captured. And most of them were executed, including Keith, although Keith survived. And uh, he's still with us today. And uh, despite a really traumatic experience, he's been a good supporter of the exhibition. 
Paul, thank you very much for your time today and for your interview on WA Museum TV.